On behalf of the Center for Bioethics and Human Dignity, I want to welcome you to the Ethics and Theology of Synthetic Gametes. And thank you for choosing to spend your Saturday here with us. My name is Paige Cunningham, and I am the Executive Director of the Center. We call it CBHD for short. CBHD is a Christian Bioethics Research Center at Trinity International University and embodies Trinity's core value of cultural engagement. We explore the intersections of modern medicine, technology, and our common humanity. Well, these issues can be quite challenging, as we shall see in the topic of today's consultation. That's why we bring clarity to the complex. We have a vision for a world where a Christian understanding of bioethics is attended to by the academy and lived out by the church. That means that we do the hard work of anticipating, interpreting, and engaging the pressing bioethical issues of our day. And then we do the translational work of making sure that these are understandable to everyone. Let me point out just a few of the ways that the center is impacting the world of bioethics. We do this through the Christian BioWiki, an online database that brings together denominational statements on a wide variety of bioethical issues. Check it out and see if yours is there. Through our global bioethics scholars who spend time with us during the summer and then return to their own context to bring a deeper Christian understanding of bioethics, often in a very lonely place where they work. Through my regular commentary on Moody Radio called Everyday Bioethics. Through our Global Women's Health Initiative, grounding respect for women and girls on their equal dignity because they are made in the image of God, in contrast to reliance on human, on human rights and United Nations declarations. Through our annual summer conference, you have a unique opportunity to hear internationally recognized speakers, to attend workshops, and even present a paper. And there are courses before, during, and after the conference that qualify for academic credit in the Master's in Bioethics offered by Trinity Graduate School. If the center is new to you, more details are in the information pack you received as you came in. Well, whether we are new to you, whether we are old friends or new friends, I would invite you to become a member today. Here's what membership gets you. Dignitas, which is our quarterly publication, our annual report, a subscription to Ethics and Medicine, and a discount to our annual summer conference I just talked about. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Michael Sleesman, CBHD's Managing Director and Research Scholar. And today's event grew out of a conversation Mike had many years ago, and it's a pleasure for this to uh, finally see the light and bear some fruit. Mike. Well, good morning. Um, I have the privilege at the center of being involved in uh, pretty much all aspects of what we do. We're a very small staff, and so that, that marks pretty much every member of the staff. But one of my distinct privileges is to be involved directly in the research agenda of the center. Uh, it's here that our Academy of Fellows provides a significant role, enhancing the center's commitment to explore the classic dilemmas faced in bioethics as well as to engage the cutting edge issues as they emerge. Our academy, a group of individuals who voluntarily affiliate with the center around common commitments and convictions, is an er, interdisciplinary community of scholars in bioethics who engage in thoughtful discussion, charitable engagement, and mutual support. Our academy of fellows exists with four distinct goals, each of which you will see evidenced in various ways in today's consultation. The first is to advance scholarship in bioethics across the wide spectrums of disciplines represented by bioethical engagement, but with particular attention to a commitment to the Judeo-Christian worldview and the wealth of the Hippocratic tradition, two values which we see disappearing quickly in our uh, present age. The second is to produce publications and scholarship that will positively influence public discussions of bioethics and remain faithful to Christian principles and values. The third is to promote and protect the dignity of all human beings at all life stages from conception to death. And the fourth is to educate and mentor the next generation of Christian bioethicists. A tall task to be sure. The Academy epitomizes the center's vision of Christian bioethics, representing the diversity of ecclesial perspectives and even scholarly commitments to foster critical but distinctly Christian reflection on some of the most pressing issues of our day as they impact both our individual and common humanity. Furthermore, as is evidenced by the cutting edge nature of our topic today, 
the work of, of the academy must be properly placed within the context of scholarly activity. For those of you who are joining us who may be less accustomed to such environments, I offer a few guides. The first is that the academy exists as a community of scholars who affiliate with CBHD, yet remain independent. While holding in common a commitment to CBHD's core values and principles, fellows pursue scholarly reflection and publication freely, and thus do not necessarily reflect or represent the views of the center or our staff. Furthermore, as will be demonstrated today, despite the common commitments that we all share to Judeo-Christian Hippocratism, uh, fellows represent a diversity of interpretations and uh, uh, training that are reflected in different ways in which we interpret and uh, engage some of these various issues. Second, this consultation was awarded as the result of a competitive grant proposal in which Dr. McKellar and his team offered a, a proposal that not only brought together fellows, but also brought together a dialogue of scholars from various other organizations, representing another of the center's key values, which is our role in networking and collaboration. So in addition to our several fellows representing multi, multiple disciplinary expertise, we have several guest scholars joining us as well today. The third is a consultation by its nature is more of a d demonstration of scholarship in action. These are not plenary addresses, which tend to be more polished, uh, um, but rather, uh, or on the other end, this is not a working group. So they're, they're a little bit more than polished drafts, per se. But these rep uh, presentations do not necessarily represent the finalized opinion of each of this, the presenters. They are careful, nuanced reflections, but they are not final publications. Fourth in that vein, to honor the nature of scholarship in action, we ask that anyone participating here, whether live or viewing these sessions via live stream, request permission to quote or develop any of the ideas that are discussed within these sessions directly from the presenter. Each of the participants is committed to publishing their proceedings in some various fashion, but each likely anticipates there will be some revision, and in, in some cases, perhaps significant reformulation of their proposals. So as we engage today in this dialogue, let us honor the virtues of Christian scholarship. Let us do so in the spirit of charity, humility, and courage. <laughs>